I just wanted to mark the location of sunrise. It's about 7.10 in the morning on the 24th Christmas Eve. So it should start going back the other way now. All right, about 7.30 in the morning on Christmas Eve. We are currently showing 13.2 volts, but that's under extreme charge. Let me explain. Yesterday was really cloudy. Also, I've been running my little cooler um, last three or four days continuously. And so throwing a cloudy day into the mix had the batteries come down. I was 12.5 last night when I shut down on lithium batteries. 12.5 is basically dead. So, I wired a I don't know what you call it, a through hole basically on, on the outside of the house. I've got all the batteries and the, and the inverters and the chargers and everything are inside the house now. So I needed a way to get generator power back into the house. And of course my main plug-in I use is a three, a three plug-in and it won't fit in there. So I had to, I just took one of these one to threes and that fits through the hole. So I'll figure that out later. And I didn't make any noise about this until I actually saw it working. So this is the PowerMax PM4100LK. I think the K just means it's black. Anyway, it's rated at 100 amps at 13.6 volts. And uh, the way that the wires are set up, uh, I think I needed seven gauge or something like that to handle the load. I got it really short and uh, I don't have anything that big. I was going to take one of the inverter cables, but that was too big, I think, to fit in, in the uh, connector there. Um, here. So I looked on the internet and 100 amps um, going a foot, two 10 gauges in, um, in parallel is enough. So oh, I'm going to get this backwards probably. Ninety-seven point four. I actually saw an honest hundred when I started. Um, I'll see if I can center that a little better in there. It might actually be throttling already too, because it, it was at a hundred because the batteries were so low, and then as the batteries come up, it's going to start throttling. So yeah, still ninety-seven amps. Uh, I can't even see them in here right now, but the batteries are underneath the shelf. So, let's shut this off. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. So the batteries are underneath the shelf. And so what I was doing, I rebuilt the battery box. I put a lid that actually fits better. And then the battery charger and the inverter, when they're running, are producing heat that's heating the battery box. And then I have a freezer thermometer that stays in here. Because the lithium batteries, you're not supposed to charge them if they are at freezing, like at 32 or something like that. There's different numbers, but basically, if the batteries are below or at freezing, you shouldn't charge them. If they're above freezing, you can charge them just fine. So every morning, I check this thermometer and see how cold the battery box is. And then I also would have a thermometer in Tinker in this room. I'm actually using that somewhere else right now. 
So every morning I check, this is warmer inside the box than outside the box because Tinker is still vented to the outside, which is great for summer, but not so good for winter. So by doing this, all the heat that the, the inverter is already generating is getting trapped in the battery box and we're fine. If we need it, I've got this little oil heater down in there that I could run. So as long as I've got enough battery charge, I could run the battery heater for that couple of days where it actually does get cold here. So I could start the oil heater and that will produce enough heat to keep this warm. And it's like 700 watts, so it's a pretty good load, but if my batteries are full, I could run that for 15 or 20 minutes, warm the box up, and then we're fine. Yeah, anyway, so that is working. Uh, that old generator is smoking pretty good, but um, I'm gonna run it till it just dies and then I'll replace it. You know, I'm not going to worry about it right now. I think the next generator I buy will be one of the smaller uh, inverter type generators, uh, as long as it can run. This is pulling about 1500 watts. I actually didn't measure it. I could have. I forgot. But it's um, for it to do 100 amps output at 12 point or 13, 13.6. 13 that's basically it's basically maxing out a 15 amp breaker. Because the first time I started it, it kicked the breaker on the generator, which the, the label on the generator's breaker is 13.5 amps. All right, so then I'm like, I don't know if it's going to work or not. So I go ahead and reset it, and then it's working after that. So, yeah, it's a 4,000-watt generator, so you should be able to run 2,000 watts per side, but it gives you 13 and a half breakers. That doesn't add up. So anyway, it's, it's been running good now for uh, 20 minutes already, so that's fine. Anyway, so I got four 100 amp hour batteries, and they were down pretty low, like probably 10% or less. Actually, no, less than 10% last night. I'll put up a chart if I think about it. Um, so if I ran 100 amp charge for an hour, that's about 25% of what the batteries can hold. So I just figured I'll run it this morning. I got it about, you know, I'll, I'll have about an hour before I have to go into town anyway. So then I'll shut the generator off and unplug everything. And then by, you know, now the solar charge is also coming in. So that's good. And then by the end of today, I'll be enough charge that I probably don't have to run this. But it was really cloudy yesterday and rainy and stuff like that. So I've had this for a few weeks already. And today was the first day the battery was low enough that I even wanted to charge it because I've been hanging about 70%, so there was no reason to charge it, you know. Uh, the other thing is the batteries... I'll look it up later. I've got the information. I think the batteries can handle 40 amps of charge each. So if I'm running 100 amps into four batteries, that's about 25 amps each since they're all in parallel. So we're fine. You know, we could we could actually and in the uh, in the documentation for this, you can run multiple units of these chargers. So I could get another one and run them in parallel and charge twice as fast, right? Which I really don't need. You know, if I if I ran this for an hour every day, like say if it was just the worst winter ever and I don't have any sun at all. I could run this charger for an hour a day and shut the generator off and have enough power to last until the deck next day. That's that's about ideal, right? So instead of having to run the the generator continuously all day, run it hard for an hour, shut it down. Then you're back into peace and quiet. So yeah, I'm really excited. I was like, you know, if I get 70 amps, it's still better than I had. Well, actually, I don't have anything right now, so... My Harbor Freight 15 amp charger died a couple of years ago and I just never replaced it because by then I had enough solar so it was pretty rare that I would need it. So, yeah, this is great. The fan didn't even come on right away but now it's, it's not even warm to the touch. Yeah, the air coming out isn't even warm so 
It's, it's actually the, I just turned the inverter back on. The inverter is warmer than the battery charger. So, oh, and thinking about it, I'm like, I just connected the battery charger right to the wire at the inverter because that's got the big fat wires going down to the battery. All right, so that's about as good as it gets, right? Plus then I can run a really short wire up to here instead of going all the way down to the battery. So later on, if I decide I wanna move this to somewhere else, I don't have to take everything apart. I can just reach into here, disconnect from the inverter wire, and then we're set. So, yeah. If anybody has any recommendations for a good fuse or breaker system, that would probably be a good idea. Um, never did get around to doing that. So, you know, on the house, I've got the full breakers up here, but I should have some kind of a DC fuse or breaker or something down here. I just never got around to it. And if I ever blew the fuse, then it wouldn't work where if anything else normal, you know, happens, the inverter will fault out and shut down. But, you know, if I dropped a wrench and I hit the contacts, that would be a good time for a fuse. So I don't kill all my batteries. So anyway, five years later, I still haven't done it. Yeah, it is generating heat. That battery box warmed up two or three degrees since this morning. So that's working good. It's self-heating. Hey, anyway, glad to see it works. All right, that's it for now. I just wanted to also notice when I put the generator on the opposite side, the reasoning for that is that little shop that's out there, I just put the generator on the hand cart. So when I'm not using it, I just roll it back into the into the shop. And then we don't, you know, it's not out in the elements like it has been for the last four years. That's actually the second little 4,000 watt generator. Uh, the first one I ran it to the point where it just wouldn't hold oil anymore. It would just, you know. And this one is getting to be that point. But the only time I would use the generator normally now uh, was for welding. And I've got the big generator for that. So, but I guess my point was by it being on the opposites, like so it goes through one insulated wall here and then the bus, and then the shop, and the water tank. So it's basically, I don't hear the generator. I can hear the fan on the charger. So that's great. I can start it up. I don't even hear it, you know. And if the generator, like it's got an oil, a low oil shutdown, if that shuts down, that just means the battery charger stops charging. I'm running off of the batteries in here now. So um, that was always the problem before. I would switch from solar to generator and back and forth. And so if I wanted to switch, I had to shut the computer off was one of the things, right? Um, now I'm, I'm, I just stay running from the batteries and I'm charging the batteries while I'm using it. So that works out pretty good, I think. So, yay. Anyway, that is that. Uh, thanks for watching. Sorry, hasn't been a lot to talk about lately, so I just didn't do any videos. But um, this was one I wanted to do, but I just really needed to wait for the, the, the day where the battery was dead enough that I wanted to charge it. So, it's showing 13.3 now. So, I'll probably run it for another 15 minutes and then shut it off and then let solar pick it up after that. And then, cause it's going to be unbelievably sunny for the next week at least. So yeah, we're fine. And if I wasn't running the cooler, then I wouldn't need it. I just happened to pick up some, got a good deal on some, uh, like bologna and stuff like that. So I thought I'd throw it in the cooler and, you know, have something different from beans and rice all the time. So yeah. Otherwise I, you know, I don't need the cooler very often usually. So, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and share and, and all that other silly stuff. Bye for now. And end transmission.